York City, born and raised, been in California since uh, 1968. In the early 70s, I was involved in the development of one of the first computer programmable home video games. It's called Fairchild Channel F. We used a microchip, which was produced by Fairchild Semiconductor, who employed me to produce a programmable video game. The process required use of uh, cartridges. The each game cartridge, all games were put into a cartridge. We produced up to about 21 cartridges, some of which were a little unique in the market today. One was a, a uh, chess game, footwork and blackjack game. Uh, we built the first precursor game to Pac-Man which actually was a maze, self-generating and computing maze that we went through to try to get from one side to the other. Uh, the game predates Atari by a year. Atari came out with their 2600, and we were one year ahead of them. We also had a unique hand Ladies controller. Ladies and gentlemen, in five minutes, eight of Okay. Uh, we uh, produced the games for about three to four years. Uh, we were not a success in the marketplace as much as the 2600. Although some features of the 20 of our game, Channel F, we also produced the first cable video game, where we used cable television to download a library of different games that you could select at home and play. Uh, we also produced the first TV game system that was played on broadcast television. It was called TV Pow. And what the idea was, people would be called at home and on their TV set would watch the game. And it was a shooting game. And, it, and when they wanted to fire at the target that was moving, they would have to go and say the word Pow. When they went Pow, the projector would fire from the game in the studio and hit the target. And the best of my knowledge, it was the first and practically the only game that was ever built to be used on broadcast television. Uh, a company uh, used it here locally for a while in uh, Channel 2, which was used as what they call the dead time of TV, because when you didn't have soap operas, what did you do when you showed old movies, and in between the old movies you ran contests and things like TV. No. Uh, I continued on afterwards on my own and started a company called Videosoft, where we produced cartridges for the Atari 2600 system, one of which was called Color Bar Generator, which was actually a piece of test equipment done in software. You plugged it into the 2600 and it would put a NTSC color pattern up that you could adjust your TV for the proper color. Also for sound and horizontal, what have you. We also uh, made several other games, a three-dimensional game that we did never release to the public using the analytic red and blue glasses for three and three dimensions. Uh, right now, uh, I'm kind of semi-retired. I enjoy coming to these shows to talk to people. Uh, and that's about all I can talk about right now. How's that? Channel Channel F game was on the market for about four years. It continued with another company when uh, Fairchild got out of the business and another company bought up the excess and was still building cartridges and supplying units for oh, another five or six years. I, I think the numbers that were produced were less than uh, 100,000, which to Atari that would have been a drop in the bucket. But they've gotten uh, looted over the years that nobody even remembers about what these games are all about. But, uh, <coughs> what are the other questions you want to know? Uh, just, just about the different, about the controllers, because I noticed there was the unusual controllers. The controllers were unique, that they were eight-way hand controllers. And uh, I designed the concept, which was turned into practicality by a guy by the name of Ron Smith. And what it was, was it allowed you to turn right, turn left, pull up, Push down, tilt forward, tilt backward, tilt right, tilt left. We had eight axes of control on the one joystick. 
which was very unique in the uh, marketplace, still is. And it did not use any uh, pots. It was all done with switches. In fact, we developed a program which we called it our digital sweep program, which allowed us to emulate a pot by closing contacts and make it think that there was a pot there. The only difference was that it would not, like a pot, you can always find the same position and bring it back. You couldn't do that. You have to drive it back to wherever it was. But it made for a different kind of feel for a game that some people had difficulty with. But uh, again, the hand controller continued on by itself for uh, another 10 years. Some people are using and adapting it to other games. Okay, and then my other question is, uh, could you describe the hardware? Uh, what was that all about? And uh, how many games were produced for the system? Uh, there were two built-in games without a card. Oh, there was no, oh, okay, so it was all hardware then? Yeah. Oh, two okay, built-in games. That. The, well, no, the built-in games, <coughs> the heart of the system had its own exec software. And what it would do is that it would look for a cartridge. When it didn't see a cartridge, it would play the internal games. When you okay. plug the cartridge in, which the mechanism was a shoot mechanism, when it saw the cartridge, it would turn control over to that cartridge. Oh, okay. And then the cartridge would initiate its commands to make it do whatever particular game you wanted. So it had a uh, adjunct kind of function that we can also enter into the cartridge. We could use I.O. ports. We could have put joysticks into the cartridge if we wanted to. Oh, okay. And do you know how many games were written for the Originally, uh, we did 18. And then okay. the secondary guy that bought the system produced another four or five on its own. And were the games uh, clones of other existing games, or are there actually some original? Some of them were original. Most of them were original. In fact, uh, we were cloned off. We made the first blackjack game. Oh. Uh, and our blackjack game had very good graphics on it, compared to other companies who were copying it. Uh, we also, like I said, made the first maze game. Now, what was amazing about our maze game is that the maze game, was it would compute a maze. There were several thousand different mazes, never repeating, that the machine would calculate how to build a maze. So every time you played, it would be a different game kind of thing? Different games. Hmm. And the mazes had functions. The mazes were, it was the invisible maze. That the maze would be there, but you couldn't see it. And you'd have to find your way around it. But it, was, it wouldn't light up on the screen. Kind of like something they had in one of the combat games, I think, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. And it would have a, there was a trail one where you could actually leave a line and show where you were so you can go back to that point and you make a trail. Then we introduced the mouse into the thing and the cat. The two players were the mice and the cat would come in and gobble you up. And you would have to run and hide from the uh, cat. Which sounds an awful lot like Pac-Man, doesn't it? Yeah, it sure does. Yeah. Okay. We did that way back in 1975. 75. And Pac-Man came out in the early 80s, I imagine. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. 